and we read through this not long ago, so I just want to try to read through the chapter and we want to go to 25. I don't want to be, but I think we need to read this first. I'm not going to. <coughs> Let's start. Starting in the, ver in the first verse of 24, though. So. All right, let's open prayer. Father God, we thank you for this uh, beautiful night, Lord, that we're going to be in your house. We pray that we'd understand the things you would in the scriptures, and Lord, that it would just make us a better Christian in the future. We just pray for all those that are not here tonight for whatever reason, Lord, bring them back to the next point in time. We just pray that you keep them safe and until that time, Lord. We pray that you uh, keep us safe on the highways and on our daily jobs as we travel around about, Lord, keep us safe. And we just thank you for all you do for us. And for those that are on our prayer list, we ask such blessing on them. Uh, Lord, you know their situation. We pray that you'd be with them. We thank you for such a wonderful time today and, and the wonderful turnout that the uh, Clay St. Baptist Church had. We pray that they'd lead souls that, that the seed was planted in uh, their life, Lord, that they might accept you before it's everlasting too late. Thank you for all you do for us once again. Be with us, keep us safe, healthy, and happy in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, I'm a slow reader with the deer for an hour and a half. Chap, chapter 24. <coughs> we read it recently, so y'all ought to remember some of it. At least part of it. Y'all remember us talking about the end times and Christ telling the disciples. They asked him, they asked him some questions and he was giving them their answer, but he was doing it in a way that uh, <coughs> spanned over a major amount of time. <laughs> and it was in this in chapter 24. Chapter 25 is related to this chapter because it doesn't show that Christ stopped talking. He was just going from one uh, 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 parable to another and, and trying to give them those answers that they were at looking for. When you when you read 25 and don't read 24, you don't know what they're talking about. And we can we can uh, understand bits and pieces of those. Uh, one of them is the the ten virgins that had their lamps of uh, lamps and full of oil, and some took extra oil and some didn't, and and they were looking for the bridegroom, and that's the, what I want to read after this. But you wouldn't understand that God, uh, Christ was trying to tell them that this is things that they wanted to know when they was asking that question. When they asked the question, he went into the next chapter telling them those those answers. And if we don't read this, we won't we won't understand that. So. All right. And Jesus went out and, and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for, for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be uh, thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount of Olives, the temple, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of uh, thy coming and of the end of the world? We know that there's three questions there, not just one. And Jesus answered and said un unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of, of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be uh, afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and, be, uh, be, and because iniquity shall abound the love of many, shall wax old, uh, cold and we I feel that in our world now I don't know if y'all do or not but people just don't care for each other anymore but he that shall endure unto the end shall sh the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom uh, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the uh, holy place so read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. 
and woe unto them that are of a child and, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray, pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall uh, be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be sh uh, should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagle be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the, he of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the trials of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, winds from one end of heaven to the other. The learned parable of the fig tree, when his uh, branches is yet tender and uh, putteth forth leaves, ye know that uh, summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And he was talking to a group of people then, and that, that group was not the group he was talking about when he says that that generation will not pass away. It's the generation that those things that we're reading about are happening. Well, I'm not trying to tell y'all Christ is coming back tomorrow. I'm not. But the things that we're reading about, a lot of those things are going on. And uh, uh, that generation will not pass. Is it my generation? I don't know. Is it my kids' generation? I don't know. But the generation that sees these things fulfilled, they will not pass away before the end time has is, is come. All right. Where was that? 35. All right. Heaven and earth shall, shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and the hour knoweth no man, no, not the angel of heaven, but my Father only. <coughs> but as the day of Noah's were, so shall also come the coming of the Son of Man be. And that's obvious that that's going on. For as in the days that were uh, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and, and took them away all the way, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known, and what uh, watch the thief would come, would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready for in such as an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant who his Lord, who his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, all and all, and shall begin to smite his uh, fellow servants and to eat and drink with, with drunken, with the drunken, the Lord of the, that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him. His, him, his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So Christ is answering the questions that they ask, and he's not quit when he gets to chapter 25. All right, so we're going to read the parable. Uh, it says, readiness and, uh, readiness and Stewardship. This shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, 
which took their lance and went forth to meet the uh, bridegroom. I don't understand their their culture. I didn't. I'm not studied in their culture enough to understand why they would be ten virgins waiting on one bridegroom, or if it was more than one bridegroom. But it says a bridegroom. We know the church is is the bride, and Christ is the bridegroom. So he's telling them uh, uh, of future happenings, um, and using this parable to explain things that's happened that they understand on this earth in a, in a physical way and in that spiritual reflection. All right. It says, And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And they say just five of them slept, but all of them slept. And at midnight there was a cry, cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all the, uh, those virgins arose and uh, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said un, unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. We, we, uh, we need to be prepared. Even as Christians, we need to be prepared looking for our Lord. Now, it talks about these like they might have been lost. Some of them was lost and some of them saved. And, and I don't believe a person can lose their salvation. So I don't, I don't believe a person that was saved that Christ would overlook them as the, as the bridegroom. But those, those that are not ready, that have not made those steps to get those things right in their life, are like those that didn't have the oil. We, we understand in, the, in, in biblical terms, oil is used on a regular basis as a representing the Holy Spirit. So those that had their lamps and didn't have no oil, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in their life. I would think that they were lost, those five. But they, but when the time comes, what are they doing? They're asking, they're asking for those that's around about them to give them their oil. We're not able to give our of our salvation to somebody else. Only only plant those seeds in somebody's life. When we don't plant seeds in somebody else's life, we're like the one, the next. Uh, 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 parable that Christ is talking about where he gives those talents to those those men. <laughs> the one, two or three, I don't remember, to the other and one to the other. The one that had, that had the, the five talents, man, he, he made more talents with the talents he had. He he, he had went out, him, him having that priceless thing went out and made more of that priceless thing. Now, the other one, the second one did too. Well, the third one, what did he do? He hid his talent. He didn't. He didn't use it for what God had give it give it to him for. Well, we have we have a precious gift. When we don't share that gift, then we're just like the one that dug the hole and buried our Lord's money, and uh, and turned around when he came back and said, "Here I am. You still got me, but you don't. I didn't do anything to help you gain anything else." So these virgins, they they don't have any oil, and they're asking, "Let me borrow yours." Well, that, that day is going to be like the, the day in Noah's Ark when Noah and his family was there and God shut that door. There was no way, can you imagine, Noah and his family, knowing all those people out there were, were dying and uh, not able to open that door back. God was the one that was going to open the door, not Noah's. And Noah was not the one that closed it. He was not the one that's going to be able to open it. There's going to be a world of people out there when not ready at that moment in time when Christ comes back. And guess what? They can't run and buy no, no salvation. They can't run and ask nobody to give of their salvation. They are completely out of what they was in need of. All right. I, I lose my place every time I stop. <laughs> All right, verse 8, I'll start there. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer saying, uh, saying, Not so, let there be least there be not enough for us and, and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the, and the doors were shut, just like old Noah's Ark. That door was shut. When, when we take our last breath, it's over with. There ain't no praying somebody out of, of where they're at. It's just, not, it's just not biblical. It doesn't say anything about us being able to pray for the soul. Of, of, our, of our lost uh, loved one out of wherever it may be. This, uh, we know that there's, it's, it's either uh, black and white. You know, it's, it's, 
uh, light or dark. There's no in between. You're either lost or you're saved, and that's all they are to it. There's there's no in between. Christ says, in Revelation says, uh, <coughs> you're neither uh, hot nor cold. You know, he said he says you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. There's a lot of lukewarm Christians, and and I, I preached about that, and, and it's just like uh, riding a fence. You're you're on you're on top of that fence, and you can fall either direction. And uh, uh, Christ says, get off the fence. Don't don't ride that fence. I would rather rather you was hot or cold than to be lukewarm. And because we're lukewarm, Christ spewed those out of His mouth. Here, here, those that were lukewarm was those virgins that, that had only partly done what they needed to do in life. They hadn't done the most important thing. You can't run a lamp without oil. You can have the lamp, you can have the have the uh, wick, but if you ain't got oil, your lamp won't work. And in your spiritual life, you can you can act like that. You can make yourself even be a sinner. And what we talked about this morning, being that there's we're born sinners. All all men are are evil. They're evil in, in, their, in their ways and, and not all good and, and sometimes evil. What was how did it go? It says some, the, the, the human, the humanistic uh, thought of that is that all people are born good. And then, and then we do bad things, but we're, we're rel rel relatively, relatively good. And on the other hand, uh, God says that we're we're not we're bad, but but to to uh, uh, we have to try to be good, and a person can in their life really try to be good and reflect those things in their life. They can be good, but it doesn't make them good because we're just we're born sinners. Well, these these virgins, they they had uh, not taken in the thing that they needed. To, and then we talked about it this morning being that mediator between us and God. And that's our Lord and Savior. And the bridegroom, when he came, that's his, that is our Lord, the one that the church is, is married to. We're, there, there's, a, there's a great marriage to come. And it's us being married married to Christ. Christ being a bridegroom and us being the bride. And if the bride was not ready, then is she a bride? <coughs> She's not a bride. That's it. I don't know what we call her, but not a bride. But uh, they were not ready for for the the marriage of of our Lord and Savior to the church. All right. Figure out where I was at again. <laughs> Afterwards, come come also the others, uh, the other virgins, saying, "Lord, Lord, open to us." But he answered and said, "Verily I say unto you, I know you not." Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. What was it they asked? Let's go back. 24. He sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him, probably saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Well, they was asking a broad question. And what shall be the sign of the com of thy coming and of the end of the world? Christ says, no man knows that time. God his Father is the only one who knew. Not even the angels in heaven, I believe our Lord knows now. When he ascended, he ascended back to the Father, I believe the Father told him. I don't believe he, he's him being God himself and, and, and that part of that trinity that he don't understand when that, that last time, that last minute that that trumpet will be blown and he'll come back. But he says, and when he, they are asking him, no man knows. So what is, it you, what is it that you need to do when you don't know that something is going to happen is to be ready when it does. We, we see on TV constantly about hurricanes here in Florida, and, and every year, sometime about the next two months, man, they'll be on the news. Every time you on the news comes on, telling you, make sure that you got water, Make sure you got batteries. Make sure you got the things that you may be in need of if we have bad weather. Well, Christ is saying, hey, those things don't really matter that you're asking. What you need to do is be ready when, when I do come back. You, you need to have your life right. You need to have, have those things ready. You need, to, you need to have them batteries. You need to have that water. You need to have 
But mostly you need to have that Holy Spirit in your life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit and Christ comes back, there is no chance of, of ever of ever uh, uh, redeeming you being redeemed. Now, those that will have to live through the tribulation period, we've talked about it many times, they're going to have a hard time being, being uh, uh, having to go through that life, through that time in their life. Those those that do, there's a lot of them going to be saved. It says a multitude of people is going to be saved. But look, look what they have to go through to, to, to uh, receive Christ in their life. The Holy Spirit was sent to the church. When, when Christ says, says uh, uh, he, would, he would ask the Father to send the Comforter, and uh, that Comforter is the Holy Spirit. When you ask Christ in your life, you, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be a part. You're supposed to be that temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being sent to the church, the Holy Spirit is not going to be here when the church is raptured out to that marriage of the, of the bridegroom, our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is not going to work in that same fashion as he, as he is, does here with us. There, those that will be saved will be saved <coughs> the way they were in the Old Testament. And, and uh, uh, it's going to be harder on people to live that life they should live, not having the Holy Spirit there with them. The next story I said, said the next parable, he's talking about those with the money. And he says, you know, that the one, the one didn't do anything with his money. He just buried it in the ground. And, and Christians do that a lot. We as, we as Christians, even though we may have our life ready ourselves, we may, we may have Christ in our life, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we don't plant the seeds in other people's lives. And that, those talents were, were that in my, my eyes, were, were Christians talking to other people about having Christ be a part of their life too. And what other work can we do for the Lord that he that he don't need us for that, but what other what other great work can we do for the Lord than to plant seeds in people's lives that they accept Christ as Savior? That's the most important. It was the most important thing in your life. It was the most important thing in my life, and it should be the most important thing that we do for somebody else. When we can talk to somebody about the Lord then those talents, um, and I, I really believe that there's, there's going to be those that's going to be in higher positions in heaven. I'm going to be glad to be there. But what is God going to put those over that, that have talked to? Uh, I've mentioned Billy Graham before about him having all these people that come to him under his ministry. But who, who was it that, that taught Billy Graham, talked to Billy Graham about the Lord? And it was a Sunday school teacher. So uh, those, those souls that were saved under Billy Graham's ministry was, was saved under, the, under that planting of a seed that that Sunday school teacher done in Billy Graham's life way before he ever was that that fantastic preacher that he ended up being. Somebody, somebody planted a seed in his life. And it doesn't take, it doesn't take a, a, a preacher, it doesn't take uh, a prophet, it doesn't take uh, uh, some magical uh, power that we may have in some way. All it takes is us just mentioning our Lord in our life and reflecting in the things that we do. That's what plants seeds in people's life. They don't have to be in a church house. We don't have to drag them to church. And like I said this morning, we ain't got to beat them on the head with the Bible and Scripture. All we got to do is just plant those things in their life that, that they dwell on them and the Lord can come to them and, and woo their hearts. We can't do that. We can plant the seed, but we can't woo their hearts. As, as much as we'd like to, we'd like to, like I say, we'd like to be able to, to uh, give that all that the virgins was in need of to our, our loved ones. And we'd give to them freely knowing they had the Holy Spirit in their life but we're not able to do that this, the, only way we, the only thing we can do is to uh, pray about it the prayer, prayer is the most important thing and be able to talk to those in, in a way that they're not offended and uh, that seed in their life grows rather than is dormant you know, their seed, they find seeds in caves it's 2,000 plus years old and still be able to grow crops and they grow back then. Can you imagine that? We might plant a seed in somebody's life today and it may take years and years before that seed ever sprouts, but planting the seed is giving it an opportunity to grow. When we don't plant a seed, then there's obviously no way that, that seed is ever going to grow. If we don't plant it, it can't come up. Amen? All right, Tim, did you go to sleep? <laughs> Uh, I kept you waiting. Uh, has anybody got anything they'd like to?
to uh, add or take away or question or we all farmers you know that's, that's that's really what a redneck is a Michigan farmer I guess we we all farmers we ought to be farming for the Lord not for for ourselves and so anything we do like that is those talents that God lays up I know that we're not worthy of the, the gifts that he'll give us but in the end we're, we're going to know we're not worthy and those things are going to go to our Lord um, I'm just going to be glad to get there I'm, those scriptures talk about being just getting there by the seat of your pants pretty much with, with, the, with the, the stench of burnt feathers going now I don't care that that's the way I'm getting there I would rather, I'd rather get there in a whole lot better uh, standing with my Lord than, than I can at this moment in my life but Maybe I can grow and grow closer in the end and be able to say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, not that person I was in the, in the past. And I'm going to grow to this point in my life, in my spiritual life. I, I can't grow physically, but I can grow spiritually. And by my growing spiritually means other people growing spiritually. Amen. All right. Am I ready to go home already? Get dismissed. Father God, we thank you for this uh, lesson, Lord, and we pray that we always be that one that uses the talents that you give us, Lord, to, to bless you in whatever way that may be possible in our lives, Lord. Sometimes we're in bad situations and we feel like that we're being uh, persecuted for uh, reasons that we don't understand, Lord, but we just pray that we, even in those cases, Lord, we understand that you put us there for whatever reason that may be and we might uh, be able to talk with those around about us in whatever way it may be like Paul being in prison and him being able to talk to uh, those about uh, about you and uh, even in his hard times. We just pray that you give us that opportunity and hopefully, uh, Lord, give us the strength that we'd understand that that's what the case is and we would we would uh, do your, your will in our life. We just thank you for uh, giving us such a wonderful, uh, blessed family here, Lord, and we thank you for our brothers and sisters. Pray that if there's anything we can do for each other, that you would point those things out and give us that opportunity. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.